Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Star Guides, a series dedicated to improving the Star Citizen community through guides on everything from trade and industry to dogfighting and FPS combat. Today's Star Guide will be dedicated to us trade junkies out in the verse. One of the biggest questions people have when deciding to first pledge Star Citizen or even after is which ship should I buy for if I want to focus in trade? This Star Guide will cover all ships ranging from the smallest vessels to the largest and attempt to help you make the most educated decision on the information available. As a quick preface, this guide is based on current ship information and will almost certainly change between now and launch. However, the basic nature of these ships shouldn't change too dramatically, and if you want to pledge prior to the Alpha Key cutoff, this is the time. Now let's get started. First up is Tier 0. This tier is for ships that we have little to no hard information on except their basic form and function. Likewise, we cannot purchase these ships yet, so until either of these criteria are met, we're just going to do a super brief overview and then move on as quickly as possible. The first ship on Tier 0 was the $34 million crowdfunding goal, the Misk Hull Sea Discreet, a massive super tanker used to transport standard goods. Extremely configurable, <clears throat> the Misk Hull Sea can adapt to standard bulk shipping or armored cargo hauling on the frontier. Based on lore, this ship has become a favor for criminals and as such should be better suited to transport illegal goods hidden in compartments quite a bit like that ever so popular Millennium Falcon. The second and final ship of Tier Zero is the RSI Orion. According to the official Star Citizen website, the RSI Orion is a mining platform which allows individuals to take over a process formerly controlled by mega corporations. This ship includes high-grade turret-mounted tractor beam arrays and extensive side storage. This ship is easily my own most anticipated ship because when I hear mining platform, I think large very large. I mean, think about it. When do you ever hear the use of the word platform? It's almost related to large-scale oil rigs or other industrial machinery. Perhaps this might be the first capital-sized trade ship. Either way, we're going to have to wait a while before hearing more about R the RSI Orion and the Miss Coal Sea. That's it for Tier 0. Everything from here on out is currently purchasable on the official RSI website or on the gray market. Starting Tier 1 off, we're going to look at the RSI Aurora LN. The reason I selected the LN over the MR and the LX is pretty simple. According to current ship specs, the LN has superior upgrade capacity, shields, and weaponry when compared to the MR and LX. Likewise, the LN has superior TR1 thrusters and when compared to the MR. Now, the LN isn't better in every way. The LX is the only Aurora to come stock with the RSI jump engine. The reason I chose the LN over the LX, however, is its offensive and defensive capabilities. Being able to get to greener pastures does not necessarily stop pirates from turning you into salvage. Overall, the Aurora LN is a great starting trade ship offering basic fighter capabilities and an upgraded storage container. The second ship up for Tier 1 is the Origin Jumpworks 315P. This is the direct upgrade to the Aurora LN offering superior, well, everything. Looking at the other 300 series ships, we have the default 300i, the 325a, and the 350r. We're immediately ruling out the 350r as its primary role is racing. It's possible the speed may help trading in unique materials, but you're almost having your cargo space to do it. When comparing the other 300 series ships, they were all almost exactly the same except their stock equipment. The 325A comes with the Wills Op Custom Weapon System, while the 315P comes with the Origin Explorer Jump Engine and Chimera Jump Scanner. We can see the stock equipment for the 325A is more suited for combat, while the 315 assists in both system movement and exploration. Between the Aura LN and the 315P, I would have to recommend the 315P. Considering both of these are the beginner tier of trading ships, both of them are all around great choices, and you can't really go wrong. However, if you have 25 extra US dollars lying around, I recommend picking up the 315P as it's superior in literally every single way. Moving on to Tier 2, we're going to start looking at some significant changes as we're diverting away from starter ships and onto the mid-tier. First up is the Aegis Dynamics Avenger. This isn't a trade ship by nature, however for 60 US dollars it's slightly better than the 315P for an upgraded cargo capacity and a single TR5 engine instead of the TR4. Packing 10 tons of cargo space, this is the least expensive trade ship with 2 digit cargo capacity. 
One thing to consider, however, is that the Aurora has a significantly low upgrade capacity of 4, which is only lower than the Aurora LN. Overall, the ship isn't that impressive for pure trade and industry, however, the uh, the upgraded combat functionality and cargo space allows the Avenger to get into lower security space easier than previous options. Next is the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass. Compared to the Avenger, the Cutlass boasts the most upgraded capacity of 12, which is comparable only to the Constellation and Caterpillar. Having 10 tons of cargo capacity, 2 TR-4 engines, 16 thrusters, and a significant array of weapons in its category, the Cutlass is one mean beast. The problem with the Cutlass, like the Avenger, is it's not built for trade, but instead pirating. That does not mean you can't use it for trade, but as a dedicated system defense and piracy ship, true trade ships may outclass the Cutlass. <laughs> Don't let that deter you if you are a player who wants to focus in combat and a side focus in trade. In fact, I own the Cutlass, and I think it's goddamn beautiful. The first ship, the final ship in tier 2 is the MISC Freelancer. The Freelancer is the first ship thus far that has a primary focus in trade. Listed as a mercantile vessel, the Freelancer sits at a comfy 20 tons of cargo space, two powerful TR-5 engines, significantly more powerful shields, and a power plant, a wide array of weapons, and a stock Taurus Leaper jump engine. Really, the numbers speak for themselves. Having twice as much cargo capacity as the Cutlass, and more powerful engines to escape sticky situations and compensate for heavy hauls, the Freelancer is one powerful option for 110 US dollars. Now that you've seen all tier 2 options, it's pretty obvious which is the superior pure trade vessel, the Freelancer. Now the Cutlass and Avenger both have their place. The Avenger is far more affordable at $60 compared to the 110 of the other two, while the Cutlass offers combat options to non-pure traders. That being said, this guide is for pure traders, so the Freelancer is most certainly my choice pick. Finally, we're at the Tier 3 Vessels. These are the badass ships that will give you a significant advantage at the start of the Persistent Universe. First up is the Constellation. Listed officially as a multi-purpose space superiority ship, the Connie has some serious impressive specs. At 35 tons of cargo, 4 TR-6 engines, a huge amount of firepower, a built-in jump engine, and the only ship besides the Idris to have TR-3 th thrusters and an upgrade capacity of 20, this ship is no joke. The Connie is easily the best example of a jack-of-all-trades. In fact, that's the primary reason I originally purchased the Connie. I want to be able to have a dedicated combat and dedicated trade loadout, and the Connie fits that perfectly. Now, the problem with Akani is being a jack of all trades makes it a master of none. I would recommend the Akani to anyone who isn't quite sure what they want to do, but wants to go ahead, uh, get ahead of the game in any of those areas off the bat. The second tier 3 ship is the Starfarer. The Starfarer is the galaxy's go to fuel transporter. With a 75 ton cargo capacity, you're able to haul raw materials such as hydrogen and liquid foodstuffs in bulk. The major downside to the Starfarer is it isn't the most defense-capable ship, let alone offensive-capable. Luckily, being able to hire NPCs or player escorts makes the Starfarer more viable in the Persistent Universe. The one issue I have about the Starfarer is it's focused on a niche commodity market. Fuel and foodstuffs are required by every person and ship, but pigeonholing yourself into a less varied market may end up backfiring in the long run. Either way, until we know more about fuel requirements and trade, I see no reason to pick up the Starfarer at all. Up third is the Banu Merchantman, one of only a few, small handful of alien ships available to pledge. This is a very mysterious ship. Listed officially as a merchant clipper, the Merchantman comes equipped with a cargo hold of 60 tons and quite a lot of firepower for a trade vessel. As it currently stands, the Merchantman has the highest cargo capacity for non-liquid materials and offers the most defensive and offensive capabilities. One of the major unknowns for the Merchantman is its power plant. The ship itself is, a, is competitive in every way, but for some reason, it's packing the lowest quality power plant for ships in its tier. Now, most speculation points towards the Banu technology being more efficient, so it's quite possible that the ship doesn't need a high-level power plant to be optimal. Either way, I'm excited to hear more about the Banu Merchantman in the future. Now that you've seen all these ships in this tier, let's take a brief look at these three options. The Constellation is a jack of all trades, but a master of none. The Starfarer has the highest cargo capacity, but lacks commodity diversity. The Banu Merchantman has the highest non-liquid cargo capacity, and offers significant defense and offensive capabilities. 
After looking at all three options, I'm going to have to go with the Banu Merchantman. I think the Connie and Starfarer both have their places, but if you're looking for the most well-rounded trade vessel with the best survivability, I bet my money on the Banu Merchantman. <laughs> you know, I bet you thought Tier 3 was it. Well, guess what? It isn't. The last tier is what I'm calling the God Tier. The God Tier is reserved for the best of the best, no matter how financially impractical it might be. Most of you have probably already guessed it, but the one and only God Tier ship is the Idris P Corvette. Sitting at a cargo capacity of 120, an upgrade capacity of 20, and some of the most firepower and defensive systems in any current detailed ship, it's one hell of a monster. Yeah, I consider this ship just as viable, viable for trade as any other profession. Crewing the Idris out with your friends and NPCs and exchanging some guns for mining lasers and tractor beams, the Idris sits at the top of the food chain. The massive cargo capacity means each haul will yield significantly higher profits at reduced transport time. The firepower and defensive capabilities allow for targeting higher risk materials and surviving pirate attacks. After all that is said though, would I, would I recommend buying the ship for trade? Well, that depends. Currently, you can only buy the ship one of two ways. First, you can buy the War Pack from the official RSI website, which sits at a comfy 5,000 US dollars. Second, you can pursue the gray market and get one for about 2,500 to 3,500 US dollars. If you have the expendable income, nobody's stopping you. Personally, if I had that much extra cash, I would most certainly not buy an interest. But hey, you know what? That's not me. I hope everyone enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. For those of you still on the fence about pledging or considering buying a trade ship, let me know if this guide helped you come to a decision. In the future, I plan on making similar star guides focused on fighters, support crafts, and other ship classes. As always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Byronic, and I'll see you in the verse.